Steel Dynamics is a leader in the mini mill steel making industry with a focus on value added products with demanding quality requirements. And at the heart of the mini mill process, a more environmentally friendly way of making steel is scrap steel. Lots and lots of scrap steel. In fact, about 75% of the material SDI uses to make new prime steel consists of scrap steel that is often left to rust in junkyards or litter the countryside. SDI also owns Omnisource, the second largest scrap recycling company in North America. And that's where our story begins, at an Omnisource facility in Indianapolis. Omnisource collects and processes ferrous scrap and non-ferrous scrap at more than 70 facilities around the country. Here at one of Omnisource's five facilities in Indianapolis, a gigantic shredder reduces entire automobiles and other large pieces of scrap into smaller sections that will fit into the flat roll division's electric arc furnaces. After the scrap is shredded, giant magnets separate the ferrous materials from the non-ferrous. Non-ferrous scrap is conveyed away for further sorting. Just as in the mini-mill steel making process, nothing goes to waste. At a visual inspection checkpoint, employees remove any non-ferrous scrap that's hung up with the ferrous material. Next, the scrap is shipped to the flat roll division's mill at Butler in northeast Indiana. The mill campus includes 15 miles of railroad track capable of handling 700 rail cars at one time for incoming scrap and outgoing steel shipments. The mill also receives 200 to 300 truckloads of scrap and other raw materials every day. It's a 24-7 operation that runs 365 days a year. Three 30-ton scrap cranes and large front loaders facilitate moving the scrap around, in and out of rail cars and trucks, and to the scrap bay at the edge of the melt shop, where large magnets lift up the scrap and place it into a charging bucket. Scrap is loaded into the charging bucket according to grade to achieve the exact chemistry necessary for our steel products. Each furnace heat consists of 175 tons, with at least 75% of its scrap, and about 10% liquid pig iron from Iron Dynamics, a division of SDI on the flat roll mill campus. SDI is also making iron-rich units with a pioneering process at Masabi Nugget in Minnesota. Both IDI and Masabi use iron-making methods that are far more eco-friendly than traditional blast furnaces. Mini mills use electric arc furnaces, or EAFs, which require much less in the way of natural resources versus traditional blast furnaces. For every ton of steel produced by SDI, we eliminate the need for 2,500 pounds of iron ore, 1,400 pounds of coal, and 120 pounds of limestone. And we use significantly less energy in the process. The EAF process also produces 67% less carbon equivalent emissions. In addition, 95% of our scrap comes from within 250 miles of our plants. The charging bucket is moved to a position directly above one of the mill's two twin shell EAFs. The scrap is then released into the furnace, creating some real fireworks. The reason for the explosion is that a portion, about 40 tons, of each heat of molten steel is left in the furnace to keep it hot for the next heat, saving time and money. Once the scrap and pig iron are loaded, the roof of the furnace is closed and three large carbon electrodes are lowered through an opening in the roof. Then, it's showtime. And it's loud, very, very loud. The rods circulate or arc up to 115 million watts of electricity to melt the scrap at a temperature reaching 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The power is on for about 35 minutes to complete the melting of each heat, which is a good reason why our monthly electric bill is about seven to eight million. I feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of sh come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up just so they could see me. 
did what I had to do just to feed me And what was left over I put towards my dreaming But the only thing in life that has meaning Are the things you gotta work for, believe me Take into your hands a plan Your own hands can land your own brand And damn, I feel like no one takes accountability They want the credibility Convincingly unwilling to put in the f hours It takes to get some power Don't be f***ing sour Take a cold shower Scream until you're louder Work until you're prouder And f*** all the doubters They're just your downers I swear to God they all let me down I always fought just to wear the crown I'm off at these f***ing clowns Who were all taught they deserve an ounce It's only worth it if you work for it It's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown A new hot band of steel is automatically coiled. On average, each coil weighs about 22 tons, or as much as 10 cars. In the cold mill complex, coils are chemically cleaned through the continuous pickle line. Operating at 700 feet per minute, the pickle line has the capacity to process 1.6 million tons of steel annually. Pickled and oiled coils can be sold as finished products galvanized on the hot roll galvanizing line and sold as finished products or further processed through the cold reversing mill. Hot band is uncoiled on the reversing cold mill where the gauge will be further reduced to as light as 11 thousandths of an inch. Coils that have gone through the reversing mill are usually galvanized or annealed. On one of our two galvanizing lines at Butler an employee removes the dross, or impurities, from the surface of a zinc pot holding as much as 180 tons of molten metal. SDI's galvanizing lines offer a variety of value-added services, such as inline temper passing, tension leveling, chemical treatment, acrylic coating, and oiling. Annealed coils go through the temper mill and are sold or painted on our coil coating lines. Here we are on the banks of the Ohio River in southern Indiana. Jeffersonville produces hot dip galvanized galvaloom, acrylic coated galvaloom, and acrylic coated galvanized steel as wide as 61 inches. In fact, SDI is the only company in North America to make galvaloom in widths wider than 50 inches. Before being introduced into the main pot containing galvaloom coating, an aluminum zinc ingot is melted in a pre-melt pot that flows into the main pot to maintain a more consistent temperature. Here, a coil of galvaloom is checked for surface defects. Jeffersonville is also home to one of our two state-of-the-art coil coating lines operated by the Flat Roll Division. The coil coating lines at Jeffersonville and at Butler give the division a capacity to paint approximately 500,000 tons of steel each year. SDI's flat roll division is the only steel mill operation in the United States that paints its own steel. The eight-story accumulator unwinds a coil, allowing faster continuous coating. 
Some coils of thinner gauge steel would measure as long as five miles if completely unwound. The coil coating line has three coaters, one for primer and two for the top and bottom finish coating, making quick color changes possible. These lines have the most state-of-the-art equipment in the industry, including vision technology, producing the highest quality pre-painted coils available in the world. Whether coils are coated at Butler or at Jeffersonville, the highest standards of quality are maintained through continuous monitoring with leading edge technology and equipment and well-trained eyes. We recently installed equipment that allows coils to be placed on pallets. Coils placed on pallets are easier to handle for our customers who depend on forklifts to move materials in their facilities. Coated coils are staged for shipment to our customers in a broad range of industries who use our steel in a wide variety of applications. Scrap produced during processing at Jeffersonville is loaded for shipment back to the Butler Mill where, you guessed it, the scrap will be melted and used again to make new steel. It's a full circle.